Hi everyone, congratulations on making it to the end of another amazing semester, and thank you for joining me for the next few minutes as I reflect back on what I've learned this semester about who I am as a future teacher librarian. So where do I begin? Most public speakers like to start with a quote, so I guess I'll start there too. Here's one from Paolo Friere, who you might remember was my learning theorist of choice back in module two. Friere says, Educators must become conscious individuals who live part of their dreams within their educational space. Well, what are my dreams? What do my dreams for the school library look like, acted out, written down, and put into action? Answering that, I think, starts with my vision statement, which is to build a school library that inspires students to explore their interests, develop empathy, expand their cultural windows, and view the world with a compassionate heart and a critical mind. Did any of those words to you sound a little strange? The school library should be a champion of intellectual freedom, research, literacy, but compassion, empathy? To many, those words might feel more appropriate in the context of a school counseling office or even a psychology class, but certainly not a library. Yet, it was during this course that the idea of social emotional learning really took a hold of my dreams for my library. In module nine on building and managing a positive library culture and module 11 on managing student behavior, I found myself attracted to the idea that the library be a ground zero for promoting a culture of social emotional learning within the school. Whether that be facilitating events that promote literacy through diversity, breaking stigma, student voice, or simply recognizing the library's potential as a safe haven for students who want to escape the stress of their home life or school routine, librarians and their libraries have ample opportunity to shape a culture of social emotional learning. In fact, I drew heavily on SEL while I developed my student expectations for the school library. Take, for example, my guideline about awareness. When you enter the library, take a second to acknowledge your surroundings. Ask yourself, who am I joining in this space? How will my presence add to or detract from their experience? Rather than building rules that restrict or explicate the do's and don'ts, I'm eager to encourage students to absorb and reflect on the library atmosphere, promoting the self and social awareness that is built into the SEL core competencies. If we're to follow the AASL's key foundations of inclusion and collaboration, SEL becomes a priority. So, SEL is a major component of how I hope to, or dream rather, to manage my own library. When I close my eyes, I see students discussing their feelings towards a particular book, seeking research advice from a trusted librarian, and making responsible decisions based on their emotions and social awareness. But where? Where are students doing these things? In the library, sure. Are they sitting in chairs, but are they lying down on couches? Are they whispering to a partner or preaching loudly to a group of peers? Have I been slowly transitioning into a section on library environment by asking hypothetical questions? Yes, I have. Okay, so my dream library is one that is never empty. No book requires a ladder to reach and books are weeded regularly enough that there's always room for displays, decorations, and student artwork. Or, in the words of Deborah Ford, it will be my responsibility to ensure that what I own is worth protecting. In my dream library, no area is silent. Window nooks and cozy chairs are outnumbered only by large tables where the learning community builds their knowledge together. Furniture is movable or wheelable, enabling the library to become an amphitheater for drama, a laboratory for tinkering, an office for conferencing, or a study for investigating whatever it is that learners want to explore. Students have access to Chromebooks, iPads, green screens, cameras, recording equipment. They consume, but they also create. Offered areas for collaboration, they'll also be offered areas to see past their own ideas, building that empathy that is so important to me. In one of our readings from module six, Lauren Gilcrest describes libraries as adaptive, strong, and resilient and how they've evolved to suit the needs of society. 
how my dream library adapts will be up to which population I'm serving. Yet a library environment is more than furniture, books, iPads. As Matthew Lynch points out in our module six article on saving school libraries, remote access to the library is as important, if not more important to student achievement than the physical space. In my dream library, students have access to a myriad of databases, digital resources, eBooks, audiobooks from anywhere in the world. Okay, so let's recap really quick. The library will inspire students to explore their interests, develop empathy, expand their cultural windows, and view the world with a compassionate heart and critical mind. The library will be a collaborative, adaptable, technology-rich, physical, and digital space with remote access, rich with material. The library culture will be one guided by a social and emotional learning. While providing the ideal environment and following a pedagogy to inform decisions are criti critical to a successful library program, I also recognize that knowing my learners' needs will inform how I can best motivate them. During module five, I explored how I might differentiate a lesson for students with disabilities and students who are new readers but I'd like to also discuss how I plan to motivate students from low-income families, especially those who lack access to technology. In this regard, I found Monica Karabakas' SLJ article, Let's Talk About Poverty, to be an awesome starting point to follow up on our Module 5 work. Karabakas suggests making a consistent effort to book, type, book talk titles that deal with issues of poverty and economic hardship. She also encourages librarians to start a library of things and even offer a personal care zone. These are small changes I might make to my library that would give a huge impact on student learning inside and outside the library classroom. Of course, more likely than not, many of the students I'll serve in a public school will find themselves at the intersection of poverty and another form of marginalization that will oblige me to explore some of the motivational strategies to encourage students with physical differences or neurodivergence. For autistic students, this might mean building familiarity, providing a routine, or encouraging the use of fidget toys. For students with disabilities, this might be ensuring a rich collection of audiobooks or large print material. It might include easy to implement tech to speech extensions on Chromebooks. As someone who is hard of hearing himself, I would personally implement the use of headsets during direct instruction so all students can hear clearly and accurately. As with all things library, any strategy to differentiate learning or motivate students needs to be based on the community in which the library is located or the population of students the library serves. Maybe that's a good place to end, community. Module 12 and 13 gave us a lot to think about when it comes to building partnerships and making sure our libraries exist outside the walls of both the library and the school. As Ashley Cooksey points out in her article in American Libraries Magazine, parents and children see the value of the public library in establishing a reading community, but are also now making the connection between school libraries and public libraries. That being said, my dream library doesn't compete with the resources of public library, but works with them. And for me, the collaboration doesn't need to stop with the library. Networking with museums, book publishers, authors, school businesses, local businesses, and other schools will be central to the management of my library. I wanna make sure that students understand what so many of us library school students have always known which is that what a library is, is only limited by our imaginations. Thank you so much, Kim and Amy, for an enlightening semester and for keeping it real. Thank you to my peers for being open and honest in your comments and discussions. I hope everyone has an amazing summer and best of luck to you who are graduating uh, or moving on to another semester. See y'all.